Often, sprinters believe that a fast start is the guarantee of victory. Wrong. In the 200 meters and 400 meters, this is the biggest misconception. Think about it. If an athlete is the fastest up to 60 meters, does that always mean they win the longer sprint? The reality is the opposite. These races are not just about speed. They are where your physiology and energy systems make the real difference. As the distance increases, oxygen debt and lactate pressure challenge your body. This is where pure acceleration sprinters stumble, and champions are the ones who sustain velocity. Meaning it's not just about starting fast, it's about the capacity to keep speed alive through the whole race. That's the quality that turns you from a fast starter into a finisher. World-class training data proves this. If you ignore speed endurance and energy systems, months of hard work will collapse in the last 100 meters. But if you master them, your finish will be stable, controlled, unbeatable. And that's where the real game begins. The five factors that decide whether you will break down mid-race or break others. Factor 1. The Dark Truth of Energy Systems When oxygen starts to drop, your body immediately shifts into emergency mode. The question is, how prepared are you for that moment? Factor 2. The Secret Code of Pacing Strategy Most sprinters make the deadly mistake, over-pushing at the start and dying at the end. But champions, they have a hidden formula, which makes them fly from start to finish line. Factor 3. The Trap of Wrong Training This is where 95% of athletes get stuck. Because of choosing the wrong training methods, they can never break the 10-second barrier. Years of effort wasted in just one second. Factor 4. The Hidden Flaw in Recovery and Nutrition A small mistake in recovery or nutrition can drop your performance by up to 10% every single time, and you won't even realize it. Factor 5. The Mental Edge In just 5 seconds of pressure, your mind decides, will you break or will you rule the track. This mental edge is what creates the real difference between just running and becoming a world-class winner. The real secret of a race isn't just running fast, it's understanding how your body is spending energy inside. In events like the 200 meter and 400 meter, Two systems are in an invisible fight, anaerobic versus aerobic. Think of the anaerobic system like a car's turbo booster. It gives you instant speed, letting you literally fly for 100 to 150 meters. But it comes at a cost. The more you press the turbo, the more overheating you get. In our case, that overheating is lactic acid, which makes your legs heavy and stiff. Think about it. Even if Bolt himself ran a 400 meter without proper lactate training, his body would start locking up in the last 100 meters. But here comes the twist, the aerobic system. Sprinters often believe aerobic is only for marathon runners. But here's the truth. Why does a boxer survive 12 rounds? Because the aerobic system gives him recovery, landing a punch, then quickly stabilizing his breathing, refilling energy for the next round. The same rule applies on the track. Recovering quickly between reps, getting ready again for the next sprint, without aerobic, it's impossible. Now imagine, an athlete who depends only on anaerobic. He'll fly in the first rep, but collapse as soon as the second begins. On the other hand, the runner who also trained aerobic, not only will he be fast in the first sprint, but after recovery, he'll repeat that same intensity again. And that's the difference between a normal runner and an unbeatable finisher. So the question is, are you designing your training to keep both systems under your control? If you ignore it, your race will collapse every single time. But if you build the balance, even when fatigue comes, your speed won't break. And this is the blueprint I'm about to reveal, the secret that turns you from just a fast sprinter into a legendary finisher. After understanding energy systems, the biggest question is, how do you actually use them inside a race? That's the real art, pacing, and strategy. The most common mistake sprinters make is going all out right at the start. The result? The body gets exhausted too soon, and in the last 100 meters, speed collapses. The correct way is to understand your speed curve. In the 200 meters, your first 60 meters should be sharp and aggressive, but after that, you need to bring the body under control so you can save energy for the final 80 meters. In the 400 meters, strategy is even more critical. You run fast in the first 150 meters, bring a controlled rhythm in the middle section, and unleash full power in the last 100 meters. This is the science of pacing. Don't run too fast in the beginning. Otherwise, everyone will catch you at the end. Start safe, stay balanced in the middle, and then blast that stored energy at the finish. If you watch world-class races, like Michael Johnson's 400 meters or Usain Bolt's 200 meters, the pattern is clear. 
They don't just run fast, they distribute their energy scientifically. That's why their finishing looks different and unbeatable. Which means, winning a race isn't just a game of speed, but a game of strategy. The sprinter who becomes champion is the one who doesn't just run the race, but calculates it. So now think, if you had to improve just one thing in your race, what would you choose? An explosive start or an unbeatable finish? And if you have your own personal pacing rule that makes you successful, be sure to share it in the comments so other runners can learn from it too. You must have noticed some sprinters blast off at the start, but in the final meters, it's like their energy suddenly gets cut off. And then there are others who may start average, but finish by leaving everyone behind. The question is, where does this difference really come from? So far, we've talked about pace, endurance, and strategy. But the truth, a championship isn't decided only on the track. The real game is hidden off the track in recovery, nutrition, and mindset. One recovery, the invisible training. Many people spend two to three hours sweating in the gym, but ignore recovery. The reality is, muscles break down on the track, but they grow during recovery. Proper sleep, right hydration, and smart recovery methods. Cold therapy, stretching, active recovery. These are your unseen weapons. Skip them, half your effort is wasted. And this is where injuries, burnout, and plateau begin. Two nutrition, fuel versus junk. Think about it. What happens if you put cheap fuel in a Ferrari? The same applies to your body. Carbs equals the turbo boost of your race. Protein equals the architect that rebuilds broken muscle fibers. Micronutrients equals the tiny gears that keep the entire machine finely tuned. If the fuel is wrong, the result on the track will be wrong too. Three mindset, the hidden edge. Now imagine, at 350 meters, both sprinters are neck and neck. Both bodies are at their limit. Who wins? Not the one with the strongest legs, but the one with the strongest mental wiring. Visualization drills, race simulation, and staying calm under pressure. This is the thin line where a normal sprinter stops and a champion breaks ahead. Most people think speed comes only from muscle strength, but the truth is the real secret of speed lies in the one spring effect of the body. Our tendons and muscles work together to store and release energy, just like a trampoline, a bow and arrow, or a basketball bounce. And that's where the real game begins. Your speed is decided by two things. Stride length, how much distance you cover in each step. Stride frequency, how quickly you take those steps. Now remember, if you only focus on muscles, you'll never reach world-class speed. Only the sprinter who scientifically trains this spring effect with smart drills, plyometrics, parachute runs, becomes a legend. If you want to know how to unlock this hidden science, the next video is right there. Click it and watch. This might be the knowledge that changes your speed forever. So now the question is, does the real key to speed lie in stride length or in stride technique? In the next video, I'll break down the deep science. But before that, tell me, which truth do you want to uncover? Length or technique? By the way, my last video on power versus frequency already got tons of comments. And trust me, I'm working on that one just for you. So it's clear now, championships aren't won just with legs. They're won with a recovered body, a properly fueled engine, and a razor sharp mindset. Now the real question is, do you just want to stay a fast starter or unlock your full training, recovery, and spring effect to become an unbeatable finish? 